Welcome to another video by your DNA guide, Diane Southard. Today, we're going to talk about xDNA. xDNA has an inheritance pattern all of its own, and it might just be the thing you need to help you identify how you're related to a particular match on your DNA match page. Come on, let's go find out more. All right, xDNA has a very unique inheritance pattern because men get their xDNA only from their mother because, well, they got a Y DNA from their dad. Because they only have X from their mother, it means anyone who's sharing xDNA with a man has to be related to them on their maternal side, actually through one of these highlighted ancestors. Of course, ladies, we're just more complicated because we get an xDNA from both of our parents. So that means that if you're sharing xDNA with someone and you're female, it just means you could be sharing DNA from any of the ancestors that are highlighted here on this chart. We have five DNA testing companies, but only two of them actually give us information about matching on the xDNA. So already we're kind of limited on how we can use this xDNA tool. But if you've tested at 23andMe or Family Tree DNA, there are some really good tips that you can use to help you figure out how you're related to someone who's sharing on the xDNA. Today we're going to focus on matching xDNA at family tree DNA, but the same principles apply if you're looking at an X match at 23andMe. So at family tree DNA, they actually offer you a plethora of ways to decide if you're matching on the X DNA. You can click on this top X match column right here in your main match page, and that will automatically bring to the top all of the matches that are sharing X DNA. You can also use this drop down menu and choose people that are an X DNA match. But probably the easiest is just to use this xDNA match filter. So if a family tree DNA is telling me that all of these people are sharing xDNA, that should be a really big clue as to how we're related. Unfortunately, just because it says you're sharing on the xDNA does not mean this person is a real xDNA match. So if we want to figure that out for sure, we've got to do a little bit of extra digging. And that's going to involve looking at these matches in something we call a chromosome browser. So to select matches to place in the chromosome browser, you just click on these little boxes next to their name over here, and you click, 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 and then you would choose view in chromosome browser using that button there at the top. So when you do that, it's going to pull up an information panel like this one, and it says, here's all of the people you've selected to appear in the chromosome browser. And this is what a chromosome browser looks like. So I've selected chromosome 12, and you can see here that each of our DNA matches gets their own line on chromosome 12, and that line is in gray. But only a few of my matches are matching me on chromosome 12, and you can see their DNA is highlighted in a different color. So each of the matches gets their own line and their own color. So we can see three of my DNA matches are sharing DNA with me on chromosome 12. So if you're thinking about this and you know that all of these people shared xDNA, theoretically, if we scroll down to the xDNA line, we should see a color, a piece of DNA shared for everyone but we don't. In fact, we only see one piece of shared xDNA. So what's going on here? How come family tree DNA said they were all sharing xDNA, but when I'm looking at it in the chromosome browser, I don't see the pieces? Well, it has to do with the setting in the chromosome browser. So you can see at the top of the chromosome browser, there's this setting that says, how big of DNA pieces do you want me to look for? And the default is that we want the system to look for pieces that are five we're called, they're called centimorgans, big or bigger. So if they're not showing up, it means that the pieces of DNA I share with these people on the xDNA are smaller than five centimorgans. And you can see if I, I alleviate that, that option, that it has to be higher than five, I can see all of my matches. The problem is pieces of DNA really that are smaller than 10 centimorgans are confetti. They're just tiny pieces of DNA that likely do not indicate any kind of relationship at all. So you have to be really, really careful when you're looking at these kinds of pieces of DNA. 
So how might you use xDNA to help you figure out how you're related to someone else? Well, you saw I did have one good xDNA match, and we're going to call her Miss K. So if I wanted to figure out how my dad was related to Miss K, and they're sharing on the xDNA, the first thing I know automatically is that Miss K has to be related to my dad on his maternal side, right? Because he only got xDNA from his mother. So right away, we know something really important about Miss K. Now, from her autosomal DNA test, we also know that Miss K is about a second cousin to my dad. So, I'm sorry, about a first cousin to my dad. So that means they should share grandparents. So if they're sharing grandparents and she's a first cousin, there aren't that many ways that we could be related to each other. And you'd think, well, you should know who she is. That's a pretty close relative. But unfortunately, my dad's family, we don't really keep in touch with each other all that often. And so there's a lot of relatives floating around out there that we don't really know. So one way we could investigate that is to look at all of the descendants of my dad's grandparents. So if we take Lucy, for example, his grandmother, we can see all of her children. So this first cousin should be a child of one of these children. Now we know her last name isn't Butterfield, and I'm not telling you what her last name was, but the first place to look may be the the children of the daughters, because we know they would have a different surname. So if I go about that search, I can see that this first daughter, Helen, she had this last name that my match doesn't have. And a quick search shows me she's always had that last name, and maybe this isn't the best place to look. The next match, however, I found a record relatively quickly where I found that this Lita had married someone with the surname of Miss K. And so just like that, without very much work or effort, I was able to figure out how Miss K is related to my dad through which of his grandmother's children. So what can you do next with your xDNA? Well, certainly you need to review your xDNA matches, put them in the chromosome browser, and make sure you're actually good xDNA matches. If you're not, that means you don't limit your relationship to one of those xDNA relatives. You can also make sure that you're following up with each of these relatives, asking them for more information. That's always a great next step when you're trying to figure out how you're related to someone else. So go for it. Give that xDNA a try if you've tested at Family Tree DNA or at 23andMe and see if you can figure things out. And leave me a note in the comments and let me know what you learned. But until next time, I'm Diane Southerd, your DNA guide.